everyone, it's Kat. I am here with one of the newer Mustangs I picked up. This is the two-year-old Brown Appy Philly gathered from the Warm Springs, Oregon HMA. And her name is Maisie. On day two, she let me take her tag off and she earned her name Maisie. And so what I'm gonna be doing with her today, um, she just had a week off from work. I've been gone for a week and I just got back and today's her first session back in work with me. Um, she's very guarded of her left side and she just wants to move away. Before I got her halter on, her reaction to me going to her left side would be to run. Um, so this halter has helped a lot because it means that when she wants to run and react, I can slow her down and guide her by putting pressure on the halter. Because I taught her how to give in to halter pressure, so now when she wants to run, she feels halter pressure and she slows down, stops, and thinks. So that's just the beginning of me teaching her how to think instead of react, and it's going really, really well so far. Clearly she's standing next to me, she's being super calm, which is not how I would have imagined her a week ago. A week ago she would have been running around this round pen going back and forth like crazy because I'm standing here. Um, so this is really awesome, and you'll notice that her halter is tied on the right side of her head, and this is because she's super guarded of her left side, like I said. And I could get her neck tag off, I could touch her cheek and her upper neck. So I got her neck tag off on that left side, but she's just super guarded of it. And um, I flipped her halter inside out so I could tie it on the right side, which she's really comfortable with me on compared to the left side. Um, and so, I, like I explained a little bit, I decided to put this halter on. I decided to flip it on inside out, even though she wasn't ready for it to be tied normal on her left side because I wanted to show her how to think instead of react. And this, hal this halter and lead rope has helped so much with that. Um, it would be a, such a longer process if I didn't put this on because she just was not getting it and she was really struggling. So all I did was make that process a little bit easier for her and so far it's going really, really well and I'm really happy with that. So what I'm doing in today's video is something I haven't done with a newer Mustang before. I use a lot of positive reinforcement training and food reinforcement in my work with horses, you know, as far as trick work and liberty work. But when it comes to my new fresh Mustangs, I really do not use treats at all. It takes me a long time to get to that point, if I ever do. Um, but I want to try something new with Maisie. And because of how guarded she is on her left side, I'm going to try and use positive reinforcement. Um, a form of clicker training, I guess. I think it's considered that. To build up and let, start getting her to expand where she'll let me touch on her left side. So I use a verbal cue for treat receiving mode. Um, when a horse hears that, they know it's time to get a treat. So I had to first teach this horse what a treat was. She's never been hand fed in her life and she really liked the alfalfa pellets. Um, and then I started reinforcing that verbal cue. And then from there, she's gonna start learning that when she hears that noise, she gets a treat. So I just wanted to film this video and show you guys how I'm using positive reinforcement in a new way not just for trick training or liberty work, but I'm using it for normal horse training. Um, and beyond that, I'm using it for gentling a new Mustang. Because even though I can touch her on her face and she has a halter and lead on, I still consider her a wild horse because she has not met um, the requirements of leading, getting touched all over, picking up her feet, loading in a trailer, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna do some voiceovers and explain what I'm doing. And I'm really looking forward to showing you guys how this helps this horse. And I'm really just excited to experiment with this because I really do not use positive reinforcement in this form. So I'm really excited and I hope you guys enjoy. This clip just shows you guys what the beginning of our session looks like before we start any positive reinforcement work. And Maisie just wants to back away from touch. She's not comfortable with it, so she tries to move away from it. So she's backing away, which is a major improvement from before I left last week. Because before I left, she just wanted to run away. She wanted to run past me and just run and run and run. So her backing up is a major improvement. So the focus of this video is just the left side. I just want to work on getting her comfortable with her neck, lower neck, and a little bit past that being touched. We don't have time for a super long session, so we're just going to get that minor part of her body worked on and get her comfortable and build up touch with that. So this right here is the first time I am offering hand feeding to Maisie and she's a wild horse that doesn't know anything about that so I'm not looking for anything from her. I'm just offering her alfalfa pellets out of my hand. I want her to smell them, taste them, make sure she likes it and I just want to show her that it's acceptable to eat from my hand when it's offered. Tastes good? Oh, you 
think? Good stuff, huh? One more? One more? Yeah. It's good. Yummy. So now I'm going to start introducing food reward. So I'm going to rub on Maisie, and since she doesn't move, I'm going to back off and give her a treat. Now this is the first and last time I'm going to do this without giving her a verbal cue or a treat receiving cue. This is just to give her an idea of what's to come. I'm going to go back and forth between using captions and voiceovers to explain certain things just because I do want you guys to be able to hear when I'm rewarding and clicking. But something I want you guys to pay attention to is that I'm only clicking while I'm doing the action that she's being rewarded for. I want her to know that what she's doing, standing still, is the action that she's being rewarded for. This clip right here is a perfect example of when things start needing to get worked through more. So she's uncomfortable, she doesn't like that I'm touching her right now, so she's moving away from it. And I'm going to follow her and keep holding pressure. And as soon as she stops and stands still, I click reward. Um, and as you can see, she starts to look for the treat a little bit, which I will correct. But right now, it's not something I'm too worried about. So all these clips are just major highlights from our short session. This was only a 20 minute session from start to finish, which is a lot shorter than I usually do. But even in such a short session, you can see how much she took in and how much she learned from it. And it might not seem like much, but when you're working with a wild horse, it's a big deal for them to accept touch on their body. And Maisie was really uncomfortable with it on this left side in the beginning. And now she's ending the session accepting touch on her neck, her upper withers, and her upper shoulder on that left side, which is amazing. And I was just really happy to see that improvement while experimenting with something new.